shock waves and cyclical that's going through the world causing such tremendous mystical unity <laughs> at the highest levels the Roman Catholic world has demonstrated its fantabulous mystical unity with the office of the papacy and in particular the latest encyclical Fratelli Tutti. Fratelli Tutti has been sending shockwaves but in another way just confirming a lot of stuff so we could see it coming from very far actually we we kind of saw this as the logical outworking of where pachamama would go uh you know what's the great thing that francis of assisi taught us it's brotherhood so he begins with this kind of generic attitude of well because we have kind of this generic father we're all brothers and this is shown by the fact that when francis of assisi went to the sultan he didn't try to debate he didn't engage in an argument or a dispute he was just friendly now this is not exactly accurate even in roman catholic traditional theology they don't have the attitude that francis didn't try to convert saracens actually he did now i'm not supporting francis i'm just saying that it doesn't even match up to the traditional roman catholic narrative now it's been twisted to where look we're, we're past the, the period of doing apologetics we don't do debates anymore we don't engage in arguments and disputes rather we just have to establish friendship and so we see at the beginning of this encyclical valid ideas like friendship or camaraderie or human dignity are turned into these humanistic models of what now the social gospel is i mean the whole thing in the first 10 pages reads like social gospel which as we will see eventually kind of morphs into um, a not so subtle international quasi-communism uh, so that's my initial take as he starts out with this story of how francis did not engage in any disputes apologetics or wars of words and doctrines not even true in, uh, in, in Roman Catholic theology, and it's certainly not true in Orthodox theology. This is just this just rings hollow for someone like Francis, you know, to say this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, get on this sort of moral high horse about globalism and all this stuff, and then tell us that we don't and shouldn't have self defense when Francis rides around in a plexiglass bulletproof golf cart with about 30 uh secret service agents around him really so no walls no borders no self-defense you think these uh, security guards don't have freaking guns strapped you think they're not strapped <laughs> give me a freaking break dude get out of here with that mo that with that bs the first prayer quote unquote is a unitarian non-trinitarian and I think it's Muslim friendly prayer. If we think of the context of the meeting with the Grand Imam, Lord, Father of human family, of our, uh, you created human beings equal in dignity. And, and, and even if it's not uh, a Muslim friendly prayer, it's an anti Trinitarian, Unitarian friendly prayer, you see. So it doesn't really matter, right? Because the principle still holds that this is the first time we've seen encyclicals allowing for as you pointed out the concentric notions of communion right so well we've got the roman catholic church maybe that's the higher level of communion and then we've got the uh orthodox that are uh close to us but maybe uh outside a little bit of the roman uh sphere through not accepting the pope and then we got the protestants kind of out in this outer sphere and then we've got uh you know the muslims and the other religions out here so there's this scale of being of communion which is completely ludicrous completely foreign to everything in the whole history of the church all the ecumenical councils there's no no notion of this concentric circles of communion it's a totally ecumenical vatican ii invention and that's why it this encyclical moves from the unitarian prayer to the next level which is the ecumenical prayer you see that you see the move he did there now i don't know why the roman catholics can't see that this is obviously what he's doing it's obvious that this is an encyclical directed towards the people who are unitarian first to pray with us and the people who are perhaps trinitarian but not roman catholic to pray with us this is concentric circles and spheres of communion it's obvious and this is not orthodox it's heterodox obviously we don't engage in public liturgical prayers and actions 
with those who are heterodox or outside the church. Just ironic that at the outset, it's essentially a dismissal of uh, apologetics under the guise of something that is true humanitarian aid this kind of stuff god is love and you have to be you have to love people not use words well this is a false dialectic right loving someone also uh, entails telling them the truth it also entails telling them you know faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god they have to hear the message they have to hear what christ taught uh it's not a a we're not primarily in a gigantic social institution that's not what the church is the church is the mystical body it's a miraculous institution. It's not primarily an entity invented by Jesus to solve world hunger and world poverty. In fact, Christ said, the poor you will always have with you. So he didn't send the church out to be the uh, communist uh, warriors for social justice and ending global poverty. And that's what this encyclical big begins with is the social gospel message of we don't need to build watchtowers, fortifications, and defensive walls and engage in war and self-defense for our uh, peoples or whatever. Now, again, that is just outrageous uh, uh, from a traditional Catholic perspective because, I mean, we have brought this up before, Snack, and I'll ask you, what is the real Catholicism? I mean, is it medieval saints that are warrior kings, warrior bishops? Is it popes calling crusades? Is it stigmata? Is it a giant palace in Avignon? Uh, is it uh, Francis walking around talking to animals and, and uh, you know sleeping in tattered rags and supposedly having stigmata? Which of these is it? Is it uh, John Paul II praying with all the world religions? Is it Mother Teresa saying that she's not interested in converting Buddhists, but rather to just you know live a life of poverty? I mean. What is Catholicism really? Is it all of those and none of those? And that's precisely why it has such a hold on people is that it can be whatever you want it to be. By the way, remember, they always make the argument about the practical side. You know, the Orthodox Church is not practical because you don't have the easy one-two punch solution of just the appeal and look and see what the Bishop of Rome says. And here we have 60 plus years of total confusion and chaos, madness, dying numbers of the church in the West, uh, uh, plummeting numbers of seminarians, monasteries closing, convents closing, Catholic schools closing, being sued, going out of business, going bankrupt. And yet they're going to tell us that, no, 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 it's all uh, just liberal media. And that's the liberal media attacking the church. Really? Really? Um, is it not the heads of the church, perhaps, that uh, pioneer and champion this liberalism. I mean, maybe that's part of the issue here. Um, so let's move on in the encyclical. He goes on to say, uh, after he talks about the transnational banking power, he says, we have grown indifferent to um, human wastefulness, wasting of food, and this is deplorable. Now, yeah, okay, it's deplorable to waste food, but uh, what is what what is why is he bringing this i mean the, the 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 problems in the world that we have and he's he's worried about wasting food now he's not talking about the problems of man's spirit you remember when jesus is walking around in john 6 and he talks about uh the lord's supper and he talks about body and blood and this kind of stuff and the crowd is just interested in a free meal and it says that many of them walked away because the stuff he was saying was weird and hard to accept. And it says they were just kind of looking for a free meal ticket. Now, what does Francis do? His encyclical is the very opposite, which begins with all this humanitarian stuff and how we need to, you know, basically erect this end to poverty, erect this feeding of the, 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 the global population. And again, I'm not saying that there's not a problem with those things, but that is not the the what Jesus told us to do. He did tell us to feed the poor, to give alms, absolutely. But that's in the context of the teaching of an expansion of the church. This is in the context of social gospel, right? And then maybe down the road talk about, you know, or maybe not, maybe not even talk about theology. I mean, the encyclical begins by saying, don't argue theology. You know, Francis of Assisi didn't argue theology. He just did works. 
but you got to have both, right? There's no dialectic between teaching the truth or doing good works. It's both together, right? You got to have both. It does, of course, give a shout out to the Grand Imam Ahmad Al Tayeb, where he met in uh, Abu Dhabi, where they declared that God created all human beings to have equal rights, equal duties, and dignity. That's not even actually true. Not all human beings have the exact same duties from birth. <laughs> a husband, a wife, a child do not all have the same duties. So this doesn't even make any sense, but this is the classic kind of vague humanitarianism uh, that you get from these ecumenical uh, documents and statements that can be read in any sense that you want. Um, and he says that we, we are called to all live together as brothers and sisters. Well, yeah, but in Christ, right? Uh, those outside of the church are not our brothers per se. Now, there is a sense in which, yes, all human beings have a common ancestor in Adam. Although, by the way, that's not even necessarily believed in the Vatican anymore. But uh, given that they have for a long time adhered to a pretty open definition of uh, uh of evolutionary theory, especially amongst the Jesuits, but setting that aside, um, the sense in which we are brothers and sisters, it's very cleverly done here in where the way um, uh, Francis will cite John's encyclicals and St. Paul, the context in which uh, Paul says, for example, not to argue and dispute with one another is amongst those in the church. He's not saying to never have a disagreement or dispute with someone outside of the faith. And in fact, if you look at the book of Acts, how many times does Paul go and debate and do apologetics? Of course he does, because Paul says that that is for those outside of the brotherhood, outside of the community of the church. But Francis takes comments that Paul says to the church and says, oh, these are now the uh, uh, universally binding moral obligations upon all, right? For example, you have a duty to support other people in the church who may be, uh, don't have a, 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 a sufficient income, right? So there's a an offering that's taken up in Paul's epistles, uh, but you could say, oh, you see, you, you have a duty to all of the poor in the world. Now, in a general sense, people have duties to every human being, yes. But the problem that, that you get from this sort of uh, socialist, internationalist mindset is what, what they will do is take the, they will erase the notion of levels or uh, degrees of duty. Like I have a duty to my family and to mo those closest to me above other people across the globe. But this has always been the, the, the liberal and internationalist fallacy, which is to equate the duty that you have to your, your, uh, those around you to the entire world, and then they actually end up erasing the duty to those around you. Oh, you don't actually even have a duty to family because family is a social construct, you see. So you see how it moves from one to the next to the next because Francis's attack and critique on the self-defense of people groups and nations should logically be extended to the family. Shouldn't the family also therefore be no borders, no wall, no father at all? I mean, why would I stop that logic at nation states and people groups uh, and then allow it for families? So Francis is quite obviously from the outset a complete subverter. And in fact, he is night and day, even with encyclicals on the family, on Christian love and duty written a hundred years ago. So it's night and day from Leo the 13th or even encyclicals written uh, up into the 20th century by uh, Pius XI. So it's night and day. It's just, it's mind blowing really.